Good morning, everyone, and welcome back. Oh, God, I done fudged up. I wore a green shirt today. This is what happens. 6 a.m. SEA Dota. Ay, 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 ay. I wore my Tidehunter shirt. I was like, this feels like a good Tidehunter day, but turns out I shouldn't wear green. But, uh, guys, it's the Summit 2 by G2A.com. We've got SEA action coming your way today, and it's going to be a lot of fun. We've only got one game. I was meant to be joined by Lysander, but I think he's busy off on some official army duty for uh, the country of Singapore, so unfortunately he couldn't join me. I'll be on my lonesome self, but we've got MVP Phoenix up against Myth Trust. We'll chop ourselves into the draft, avoid uh, the, uh, the ghostly form that is myself, and uh, let me just get a quick recap of where we stand. As far as the SEA division go, Myth Trust have been doing really well. They're 4-1. and one. Every team apart from Malaysia have a loss, though, because Malaysia have just wiped the floor with the competition. Team Malaysia 11-0, and 0, played all their matches, first place, in the standings, and well, it's Myth Trust who are four and one. MVP Phoenix four and two. So a win here for MVP Phoenix, and they're going to be ahead of Myth Trust. They'll hop from fifth place to fourth place. Uh, actually, no, fifth place to third place. They'll overtake Invasion Esports, who are five and three. So these matches, all of these matches, so important because right now there's no clear kind of second, third place team. Team Zephyr kind of struggling at the bottom. They've lost all the matches they've played. Insidious Idol have uh, yet to pick up an actual win. Uh, same story for First Departure. All these teams just with their one default win against Arrow Gaming. So, uh, apart from some of those teams listed there, there's kind of this middle-of-the-pack group with Johnny's Revenge, MVP, Myth Trust, Can't Say Whips, we've got Invasion, and then you've got some teams like Execration and Rave who currently have a losing record but haven't played too many matches, could turn things around, could make a late run, and help and try get themselves into the playoffs. You've got to finish in the top four to get there, but... Right now, we're going to see whether Myth Trust and MVP Phoenix, whether one of these two teams can pull ahead of the other, or, uh, well, in Myth Trust's case, it'd stay ahead of the other and try and secure themselves third place. A win here would put them from fourth to third place. So, draft underway. MVP Phoenix, we've, I've cast a few of their games the last few days, and these guys have been playing really well, which is kind of after a bit of a slump they had, I think, post-TI. Uh, they did some kind of role swapping, they did a bit of just experimenting, and didn't seem to be as strong as they were um, during the TI stages where they came really close to making it into the main event. But uh, I think since uh, over the last week or two, they've definitely been looking a lot better. Uh, QO's been playing some beastly games on the Slark. He's going to switch more from the mid lane into a carry role, at least depending on the draft. He plays those snowball heroes, like known for playing his mid TA uh, and just playing these snowball mids. So when they get those kind of snowball safe lane carries like a Slark, it kind of has QO's name written all over it. So... So far with these drafts, uh, we've got the Centaur Skywrath opening. This has been a popular opening for a long, long time. Anything that can help provide the guaranteed lockdown for the Skywrath Mage Ultimate. Uh, not to mention, you put an Ancient Seal on someone and you double edge him, you hoof stomp him. That's a ton of burst damage. So, a uh, lot of killing power coming out from MVP Phoenix with this opening duo. And no real surprises to see something like this uh, to kick off a draft here out of the MVP Phoenix side. As for Myth Trust, Razor Vengeful Spirit. Uh, pretty pretty vanilla opening, nothing too crazy there. The Ventral Spirit, probably the one big one, and probably thinking they want a defensive support to help out whoever gets jumped on. Like, later on in the mid to late game, uh, we don't see games end in the early to mid game anymore. You're kind of guaranteed to see Centaur pick up a blink and start going around for kills. You can swap out whoever gets initiated on by that kind of uh, stun Arcane Bolt. Uh, Mystic Flare combo uh, coming out from the Centaur Skyrath. Problem is, Avengeral Spirit's likely to go down, but it's worth it to save maybe a carry or core hero. Either way, it's a good defensive support. Uh, the other option is something like a Shadow Demon, but it's way too early to be picking up Shadow Demon. No one's fighting over a Shadow Demon pick here. And, uh, well, yeah, we'll see what the plan's going to be for these next couple of picks. Whew, I'm, I'm stumbling over my words today. <laughs> I woke up, I, I made a tweet about this, it was like, I, my alarm goes off at like 6am, because uh, this game starts at 6.45, and that's that's actually like a pretty late start for me, I've been casting at 3am, but for whatever reason, this morning, like, I got caught in between REM cycles or something, and, and just, I was really groggy, so I jump in the shower, I'm still not half awake, I put my soap in my hair, my body wash in my hair, I don't even realise, 
Then I get my shampoo and it's not going in my hair. So I, I get out of the, sh the shower and I'm like, wait a second. I definitely did not like execute. I have some very low shower MMR at 6am 6, 6 basically. Like I was putting stuff in the wrong place. It was, it was not a pretty sight. <laughs> so needless to say, I've got my tea now. I'm trying to... I'm trying to juice myself up for this match with uh, some nice English breakfast tea, and I've also got some... What is this? Some, some blueberry yogurt? I haven't actually eaten it. This game started on time. It was like 6.45, teams were in the lobby ready to go. I'm like, oh, I guess today we're not beyond the schedule, so I don't get a chance to eat my light and fit Greek blueberry yogurt, which I uh, got the other day. I like Greek yogurt, and I like blueberries, so I, I just saw blueberries and Greek yogurt and was like, sweet, I'm, I'm in on that, but... Maybe if we get some long pauses, but no eating, no eating on stream. Sorry for those of you out there who are hungry. Hearing me talk about food, and uh, that's that's not good. And sorry for those of you out there who don't have access to showers, and you hear me talking about showers. I, I don't mean to, uh, don't mean to put you down. But uh, we'll see. Ogre Magi picked up by Myth Trust to go with the Vengeful Spirit. That's going to be your support duo most likely. You haven't seen much of the core ogre outside of a few teams like EG. We saw a bit of that with Universe playing it, but. Even there, I remember Clairvoyant's making a good Reddit thread about how he didn't really like the, the, the offlane core Ogre Magi, even in these dual lane setups. It just um, didn't really scale well enough and can do, can do a lot of what it does without the offlane farm that it needs. It reminds me a lot of like the, something like a Mirana. Like, offlane Mirana just is very underwhelming. Doesn't really get enough farm to be a carry, and at the same time, yeah, it doesn't... I mean, you're just throwing spells, which you can kind of do as like a support. Sure, you won't get as many levels, but... You can do a lot more just as a, a roaming support. So MVP Phoenix is going to go for the hard carry. They picked up the Spectre. I'll have to see if it's QO playing this. It doesn't really fit his style, but at the same time, if you if you want to uh, pick up one of these big hard carries, uh, you sometimes have to adjust your play style to accommodate that. Although we have been seeing more of the Urn of Shadows on the Spectre going around, getting aggressive. Well, maybe not aggressive, but at least going for some early ganks. Like, as soon as you've got the Haunt, you've got your Urn up, and there's a kill on the map, you go for it. And that's something where... Uh, combine that with a, a Centaur when he hits level 6, which is around the same time Spectre maybe picking up the Urn phase boots. You stampede in, you get lots of good long-range initiation and that global presence of a Spectre. So something definitely to look out for. As far as other global friends, MVP Phoenix love their nature's profit, although I guess hard to fit into this draft with the Centaur already in the offlane, the Spectre in the uh, safe lane most likely. So unless we're seeing something like a crazy mid-nature's profit, which isn't unheard of, uh, it's maybe that's gonna, that maybe that's what we're looking at here. Myth Trust need their offlaner. They loved picking Hee Hee Clockwork, so I think look towards a Clockwork for Hee Hee. Played it the last two games of Myth Trust that I've cast, and MVP Phoenix for now will go for the Lich. So they secure their second support. Normally you think Lich and you think dual lanes. Lich is not really a good safe lane support. He's better off denying than pulling back creeps in the off lane or even doing a little dual lane mid. So at least the first couple denies. Maybe then after that he rotates to the safe lane. But because you go Dark Ritual level 1, or I call it Dark Ritual back in my Warcraft 3 Dota days, because uh, you go uh, Sacrifice, you can't really zone out too well. You've kind of got bad attack animation and not too much else. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll see what the plan's going to be. Myth Trust now, fourth pick coming their way. I mentioned the Clockwork. Maybe they want to pick up their uh, one of their other, uh, other mids or carries instead, but... I wonder what it will be here, as uh, Myth Trust have not much time. They've already chewed through all their reserve time. MVP Phoenix, similar story. So both these teams taking their time with these picks, and it's going to be a Medusa. <laughs> In the Lakel's farm, we trust. Oh, my gosh. You put this guy on any kind of big hard carry, and you, you know pretty reliably he's going to get the items he needs. He can take it to the late game as long as the rest of the team don't get too badly destroyed. There was a nice game early, uh, going on early today between... Uh, newbie and LGD, where Silo was playing Naga Siren, was getting all the farm in the world, but the way they beat it was just ignore the Naga Siren, just punish the rest of the team, punish the fact they're playing 4v5, and put them under so much pressure that even though Silo's getting this free farm and had like a 15, 16 minute radiance, boots of travel at 20 minutes, Manta in like 26 minutes, 27 minutes, it was farmed out of his mind. Even though he has that, the rest of his team are under so much pressure and can't really do anything that at the end of the day, Silo could not 1v5, so... Maybe you see a similar thing here against the Medusa. Don't worry about too much about ganking Medusa, especially when it's so hard to gank sometimes with the uh, Mana Shield, the Stone Gaze, uh, all this just defensive capabilities, and and go elsewhere. Focus just punishing these squishy supports. Killing off, I mean, the Razor, who a Razor without much farm is definitely a very underwhelming Razor. And uh, we'll see exactly what the plan is going to be here. And, uh, yeah. MVP Phoenix, last pick. Nix, 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 Nix. So, what 
is going to be mid. It looks like Nyx Assassin. Or could be the Skyrath Mage. Always have to keep in mind Skyrath could be... Yeah, I, I, that puts Nyx as a support, which is possible. But I think Skyrath is your only real strong zoning support. So as far as aggressive supports goes, Nyx and Lich both... I mean, Lich is just kind of defensive, sits back. Nyx needs levels and is a pretty low impact support until he gets those levels. He's kind of that full position support. So I think Skyrath almost has to be a support. Otherwise, you're playing a very, like, kind of just too defensive of a lineup. And there's the hee-hee clockwork. So, uh, call that one coming out, and uh, we'll see what MVP's plan is here with these lanes. And I imagine we're seeing Nyx. Well, great pickup against the Medusa. We saw this uh, picked up by PPD against the Kuro Medusa at Star Ladder, and it worked out to be a fantastic choice. Especially if your Medusa wants to go for those heavy stats items, like, I mean, less so, the, the Linkage is okay because you block it, that's what Kuro did, but if you go, like, for the Skadi Manta-type build, suddenly, uh, yeah, you're going to take a lot of damage and lose a lot of mana from Mana Burden. Your Mana Shield is just evaporated really quickly, so without something to kind of burst Lakel's Mana back up, Macy and Arcane's boot, Arcane Boots on the Ogre, that's all you've got as far as Arcane's builders go. Venge can, but normally see something like just like your standard Tranquil Boots, the Kells doesn't have that, like uh, uh, the uh, Keeper of the Light giving him Chakram and whatnot. Why am I calling it Chakram? <laughs> oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Chakra. As, uh, chakra, 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 Chakra. I'm, 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 I'm out of it, guys. I've lost it. <laughs> I don't know what they put in my blueberry yogurt this morning, but it's evidently something that I should not be casting under the influence of as uh, we get ourselves out of our drafting overlay and into the game. Mythtrust on the Radiant Team, MVP on the Dire side. And who is on the Nyx? Is it going to be 4F? So 4F normally playing one of the core roles, sometimes mid, sometimes offlane, and we'll see him handling this Nyx Assassin. He's the, the kind of the nature's profit player normally for this team, and uh, we'll see who and what is going where. Heen, the other core player, and he may be uh, headed towards mid if it's going to be that QO Spectre here in uh, our best of one. So uh, a bit of a pause coming out. Looks like MVP just need a... So about some last minute things here as a uh, few for a second there, I thought I didn't have my open mic on and I was gonna I was gonna have a riot in the chat, but no riot today, thankfully, but I can riot over the long pause. Long pause. But uh, well, what do you guys think? Let me know. Myth trust MVP, whose draft do we do we favor? It is gonna be just a best of one affair, so it's uh it's a very, it, it's it's forgiving in some ways the format, but at the same time, best of one is never a forgiving, uh, like individual match format. Like you can get upset in these best of ones. You see it a lot in the style with teams like Power Rangers, Compass Gaming, causing these big upsets. But you play enough best of one matches over the course of the group stage here with twelve teams or eleven after Ara got disqualified that you uh, you can get to the point where like okay we got upset by one or two teams, but we won enough of our other matches. We're still in the playoffs. And when you get to the playoffs in the top four, then you face best of three matches. But the SCA division is so tight that I don't... I, I mean, you really can't afford to lose too many matches that you shouldn't. It's not like some of these other divisions where it's more top-heavy. I think SCA after Malaysia is very, very middle-heavy. There's only a few teams um, who are kind of classify in the kind of lower echelon of the SCA division. And it will be that QO Spectre here. I'll have to see maybe even a Lich Spectre mid. If they want to do something like guarantee Centaur some safe lane farm. You can do Centaur, Skyrath, safe lane and just Nyx in the offlane. And Forever, it looks like he's headed there. So I think we could be in for some funky little dual lanes. Lich, Spectre, mid. Skyrath, Centaur, safe lane. You guarantee Centaur a fast blink. Your Spectre can get some good farm in the mid lane. And I think that's a really strong setup here. Spectre, it is a little bit harder to get comp as much farm as you would in the safe lane in the mid, but I think the, the trade-off is you get a really quick blink on your center. And we talked about the Spectre going for that, like, phase boots earn build. You can do a lot with this. SD, oh, he gets scattered out here. <laughs> Reason suddenly says, uh, yeah, I don't feel too safe up here. I think pretending he planted a ward, maybe. Like, he shows himself, and he's got one observe ward, and Myth Trust are thinking, where's the other? He may waste a sentry if uh, they're not careful. So we'll int introduce our two teams. It is going to be March down towards this bottom lane. Maybe just going to do a single deny. We'll see if he stays down there on the Lich. We've got four of on the Nyx Assassins. Bo boots first for him. QO going to be on the mid Spectre. Reason on the Skyrath Mage. Boots first for him. And Heen playing a safe lane farming Centaur for the MVP Phoenix Korean squad. As SD will see a regen rune. And well, one of the great things to do, throw some spells, pick it up. But Reason says, I'm not going to let you do that. I've got boots. I'm a Skyrath Mage. I'm pretty damn fast. So SD... 
On the Radiant side, it's going to be the Mythtrust support player on the Ogre. We've got Mypro going offlane with the Razor. Mid's going to be Hehe on the Clockwork. We've got Ventral Spirit pl being played by Gotcha. Currently looking to do some early roaming. And Lakels on the safe lane farming Medusa. Being in somewhat of a matchup against this Nyx Assassin. There's that early Cogs coming down. Just looking to burn off Kyo's mana as early as possible. And already hits him once with that, it looks like. As Kyo somewhat mind depleted. And that Spectral Dagger, it takes a lot of mana here. So something you have to be somewhat wary of as uh, a Spectre if you want to be getting aggressive and going for any sort of kills, and he gets hit by another one. He can't really last hit too well in this 1v1 matchup. He may just be left 1v1 because it is a melee on melee, but it's not exactly the most fun <laughs> the matchup for him. The cows, oh my gosh, the pain is is real. A creep wave will come in for 4. Maybe you're going to want to pick up a stout shield here, because I like how aggressive he's being, but I think you want the protection that a stout shield offers you, as we will see a pool contest coming in. Reese and almost gets brought down by the chain son of the Vengeful Spirit Shadow Demon. Luckily for him, he's got all that extra movement speed and will manage to scurry away, tango up probably, and be back on his way. So Q in mid 4 and 1 against Clockwork 3 and 1. So it actually is going okay for him so far, though Clockwork does have this creeps under his tower. Q Whoa! Ooh, that's a lot of damage. He tanked that one in the tower, and Clockwork wants him as well. He's going for the right clicks battery assault. Can he get the cogs as well? Kyo is staying by his creep wave. Nicely played so far. The battery assault will be expiring soon, but Kyo is still taking hefty damage. There's the end of the battery assault. Gets him inside the cogs. So Kyo, one or two more right clicks. This could be close. MVP Kyo is going to go down. First blood to he he on the clockwork. Oi, 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 Kyo, man. I feel for you, man. I feel for you. That's not a fun matchup against that melee clockwork. He's probably saying, where's my lich? I want my lich back. And he gets brought down a solo killer. That, he he. Played it well. Kyo took a few too many tower shots, and unfortunately for the Spectre, that's uh, not a good start for him. Top lane, ooh, reason. If there was some boots on that Razor with the bonus 35 damage of the Static Link. One more right click, and he was dead as well. Just the zero base armor. I don't know what just the zero. There's, there's none whatsoever. March now, bottom. It looks like he should be going down in pale off the mark. Nice rotation. The haste rune on the Ogre Magi. They were going to get that kill one way or another, even if that impale does manage to land, so... Across the board, Mythtrust off to a very solid start here. TP's back uh, towards the bottom lane as we'll see both mid as well as bottom going well for, uh, for, for Mythtrust here in the early game. Especially the Clockwork. You get an early solo kill, first butt at that. He's got Boots Bottle. He's going to have a really well-timed level 6 and start. Roman can just start controlling the game so damn well. They can put some pressure onto the Kells, even though there was a kill down there at the bottom lane. Uh, Lakel's not actually did pick it up himself, but even so, he's not going to get the best farm because he is up against the sacrifice spam of the of the lich. Not to mention, going to be constant frost blast harass as well. He, he goes his second point in battery assault. Maybe he goes for another kill at level five. He's bottled up and has a lot of HP and mana to just spend here. As we do see a uh, observer being put down just in the lane here, as he wants to contest this pull as much as possible. Not let anything. Uh, too suspicious go down with these pulls and so far doing pretty well as uh he's gonna want to last hit this big sate here as uh, looks like he's just gonna right click it down skyroth gonna work on the other one and there we go good teamwork coming out from the mvp side mystic snake oh four of man back to found and you go he wants his money for his arcane boots i'm actually gonna get salved up He's got no mana though, but one more creep and he can buy those arcanes. Here comes a gank towards mid lane. It's a smoke as well from the Ventral Spirits. Kyo may be aware of it. I'm not sure where he smoked from this uh, Observer Ward. Right here may have spotted this one out, but he goes to the high ground. I think he saw the Spectre running at him and thought... Uh, no, I think he maybe saw the smoke and thought, okay, let's go and try to reveal this smoke as we will see the 4-minute rune coming up. Clockwork doesn't have the ability to catch up to the sky because of the boots, but with the Ventral Spirits done, there we go. That's what he needed. Clockwork couldn't do it alone, but the Ventral Spirit, nice wraparound, and it's another kill. For the Clockwork, he's almost level 6 now. Oh dear, that's kind of disastrous. Kyo's got to try and save mana for this dagger, by the way. He's going for a max desolate build. I kind of like this idea because the level 1 dagger costs the lowest mana, and you need that against the Clockwork, but he takes another Cogs hit, so if he gets hooked, Cogs and Battery Assault, he can't use his dagger to get out of the Cogs. One of the nice kind of uses of this spell is you can use dagger to escape a hookshot Cogs trap, but you've got to have the mana for it. And we will see a stun at bottom lane. There is a rotation down bottom. Skyrath Mage is actually TP down here. The Impale going to follow this one up. SD is going to be mince meat. As, uh, looks like a TP mid. Lakels decides to actually go mid. Right as Clockwork hits level 6. I like this move, I think. Okay, he's not level 6. He's too experienced away. But your Clockwork hits level 6. The instructions is, I'm leaving this lane as soon as I hit level 6. I want to go Genkin. So who takes over the mid lane? Well, it's no one other than Medusa. Bottom lane is a death trap right now. There's three heroes down here. You do not want to fight. What's become a bit of a trial, but there will be a hookshot mid, and Kuo 
does not have his dagger. Hehe, he, unfortunately, did not have mana for the battery assault, but what he has got is the cogs and the right clicks under the tower. Hehe he will take some tower shots of his own. But hey, he's going to be A-OK, -okay and the money gets split between the Medusa Clockwork, so perfectly fine result. They get the kill, and this works out well for Clockwork. He'll go back to base, heal up. He has money for his treads, and then he can just go to another lane, find another kill. His hookshot's going to be back up in 45 seconds, so maybe there'll be a tiny bit of, like, 20 seconds of downtime, but... If he buys his trades, he can't buy a TP, it looked like, so we'll see what he does. If he just wants to buy trades, he can walk to lane, and by the time he gets to a lane, the timing's going to be perfect. He'll have another hook shot, and he'll be good to go. Maybe look towards him slowing down this Centaur Blink dagger, although <laughs> this Centaur Blink... You put Centaur safe lane, you want that Blink nice and fast, but he's getting destroyed. He's got 8 CS, and that's partly because the Skyrath just had to uh, abandon ship and go to other lanes, and also because laning against a Razor is just misery, as we're seeing here. Here comes our uh, rotations up top, but this is being entirely scattered out. The Radium Zerverwood sees absolutely everything. As Myper hasn't backed off, but he's maybe going to run east here. Actually, run, run right into them? Okay, he's going to be okay. Meanwhile, it's in the river. They found Qo instead. He's trying to dagger to the high ground. He will make it up there. No hookshot available just yet, and the plasma field off the market was just level 1 as well. Okay, so they didn't get the kills they were looking for, Mythtrust, but they do keep uh, their, their offlane Razor alive. So Kells has his Ring of Aqua here in the mid lane, and he's doing all right. He's not getting the, the farm he'd like with just 18 CS at six minutes. And uh, three CS meant pretty poor. Bottom lane, meanwhile, 4F has not hit level six. He's damn close. He's going to hit it now. He could actually even net her away. Yeah, we'll do so. And the creep, wave, a couple creeps dying. That impale actually just helping out because he actually cle helped clear the creep wave and got the level six. But first vendetta, going to not achieve too much here, and it is a 60 second cooldown, so not a long cooldown, not the end of the world. As we see Ogre Magi looking for a potential kill here. Looks like he's being pinged out. Yeah, right on top of him. That was a Spectre ping here. Spectre is level 6 though, so we could be seeing that Haunt used as initiation. Yeah, go in towards the mid lane. Looks like ST is going to be the target. March also getting stunned up. There's a Stone Gaze, and March can't turn around because of the stun, so it's a one for one trade. Spectre comes in and uh, helps get that one kill. Can there be a second kill? Nyx does not have Vendetta, now gets hooked. We'll get a Carapace off, but... All he can do is throw an Impale before he goes down, it looks like here. One or two more right clicks, and yeah, Clockwork gets another kill. He he's on a killing spree. Nice and early on. Really strong start. And Mythtrust haven't even got their Razor involved. I guess same could be said for MVP Sentinel, but Sentinel's not ready to get involved, apart from a Stampede, which I guess he is about to hit level 6, but this Razor, he's farmed. He's got 32 CS. He can offer a lot to this team if he wants to, if he wants to come to some of these fights and uh, start offering up what he can. Level 6 now, he will get kinked out, that's your Stampede, and this is a dead ledge. Didn't even need a double edge there, March maybe a bit of overkill with the Chain Frost. Probably wanted to hold the Chain Frost and just use a double edge instead. And so we will see the Kells ganked out in this mid lane, he's got no mana whatsoever, and Kuo, not going to get the last hit on the kill, he would have loved to get some extra farm, but he's got his Magic Wand and Phase Boots now as a result. Something you see a bit with this new patch, like you can lose the lanes, but if you've got the heroes you win the game. There was a nice little quote from Pycatter in an interview saying how uh, we draft heroes, we don't draft lanes, and I think it's kind of the opposite of what happened in 6.81. 6.81, you definitely had to draft lanes, because if you lost the lanes, you'd get snowballed on. You'd lose all your towers, and your teams would just destroy you off of all the gold they would get from the uh, early game advantage. And there's no real, there wasn't much comeback potential, but currently with the comeback potential there, I think it's partly the new rubber band effect, but I think it's more just getting less tower gold. The ta reduced tower gold means you're not getting as big of an advantage from winning the early game, and as a result, you can struggle a bit in the lanes, like we're seeing happen to Qo, and you can catch up. And that's where you draft heroes, uh, like for the mid to late game, and just a, a well-rounded lineup that counters your opponents, as opposed to just drafting the strongest possible lanes. Not to say Mythtrust have focused entirely on the early game, they've got a great mid to late game as well. Clockwork's doing well, and Medusa, of course, well, the late game beast that she is. So this game's still pretty open here, I'd say. May need to see Razor get involved in. Get, if he just keeps going to this offline, sure he's farming great, but he'll just keep getting picked off here or there. And uh, Mythtrust can only allocate their supports to one lane as far as protection goes. If they try and spread them across multiple lanes, it's unlikely they can actually save someone like a Razor getting ganked or the Medusa at mid. Clockwork's gonna uh, be there for his team as well. He's got the TP scroll, so he is ready to go, but... Gotcha, man. This is <laughs> a risky position to be in. He's being pinged, I think. That was a... A dire ping on top of him. At least that's the way it looked. And they're maybe going for a wrap around to scout the high ground. Reason maybe thinking he's a bit too low on HP. Clockwork thinking about this. He's got no reveal. So without a dust or something, could you see that vendetta? And yeah, that's 
I was talking about, what was he... <laughs> bit of an aggressive position to be in, but Cure may be the return kill. He's not careful, ignite damage is not going to be enough, he's also got 11 wand charges. Here comes Forev in the mid lane as well, where's that clockwork? He needs to shop, needs some extra support here, SD going to go down, that's Skyrath picking up the one kill. Stone Gaze is going to freeze Forev, and now the return, right clicks are coming in, no magic damage just yet, but then the Stone Gaze wears off and he, he helps pick up the kill, Chain Frost. The bounces are going to end and clockwork can, uh, well maybe wants to pop this invis room, bottle up once and go for a kill with that invis. Reason so low here. Careful! Mystic Snake could just, end, well, end your day. He's got faster movement speed than Medusa, luckily. Stampede on cooldown here at the top lane is my pro. Oh, sniped! Level 3 Rocket Flare. Looks like it found the Skyrath Mage. Low on HP by the Tier 2 Tower. It's like when a Mystic Snake, snake catching him, it's going to be the Clockwork Rocket catching him. As March gets low, so his ability to defend this mid lane is going to be somewhat reduced as well, so... <coughs> Across the board. MVP. Bit of a sloppy play there in succession here as Heen at top does not have Stampede. He's about to get stunned up. Goes for a hoofstorm. He gets stopped first, lucky. The plasma field's there. Go gotcha's still alive though, but with QO showing up, there should be one kill, possibly two going the way of the Spectre. The Desolate damage adding up, and my pro, can he outrun this? No, he can't. It's going to be the Arcane Bolt. He shows up now with a battery assault. QO going to dagger himself over these trees. As he did no hook shot for a couple of seconds. He's got himself almost enough money for a four staff, which looks to be his next item. And yep, buy the recipe and. Things pretty much in a, at least somewhat of a balanced state. Clockwork, the most farmed here in the game. Not surprised. He got first blood and he's been absolutely fantastic. You can see in the gold and the net worth graph that it's a pretty even game, or dead even game as far as net worth is concerned. Experience slightly in MVP's favor, actually. Denying a lot of XP with the Lich, among other things, and uh oh, March. Careful. He, he can't really find the line. This going creep wave is working against him as far as the hookshot trajectory is concerned. No reason. We'll be able to get out of this one, Mech. Is it complete just yet? He's got two of the components, no mech recipe. It's the four stuff actually, so... Four stuff for clockwork and... Definitely something to look out for. And help out teammates who maybe get stunned up and... Caught in a mystic flare by just forcing them out of that. On the other side, four of them also has picked himself up as staff of wizardry and... As much as uh, Dagon's a great pup build, not something you normally see in competitive play. Maybe more likely going to be a four staff. Normally you see something like a, a blink dagger first, but four staff, not very strong against the clockwork. He's trapping people and locking them in place. So we'll, we'll see there. Hook shot at bottom lane. Battery salt to follow. Kuo has got dagger in a couple of seconds. He wants himself back up, but now that a chain sun comes in from the ventral spirit, and Kuo not going to find his way out of that one. He he will four staff away. Got just going to be careful. The stampede coming in. He he. We'll get hit by that slow as well. The mana burn not going to be enough to bring down Gotcha on its own. Nice Cog's pushback. He needs back up the Nyx Assassin. He's not getting this kill by himself. The Mystic Flare going to be a little pesky. Chain Frost as well. No. One bounce onto Gotcha. This could bring down two. Oh no. It looked like Mythras were going to get out of there without any casualties. But just enough damage there. I think. Oh, top lane. No rest for the Wicked as a multicast onto Heen. The stolen damage is starting to add up. My pro. Needs a few more right clicks, and he's going to go for the TP out. Kuo's actually uh, haunted himself into this one. Buckler's popped, and Kuo, I think with the help of the Lich, can get this kill on the Razor here. Well, Plasma Field, Kuo's just stuck, though. He can't actually right click. No Quilling Blade, nothing to chew his way through. The urn damage will tick. Oh, he gets the kill, and he's going to get out of here. The urn damage wasn't enough. What on earth am I watching here? Kuo now goes out looking for... The Ogre Magi Razor did end up being picked off. It looks like Spectre caught him out with a long-range Spectral Dagger there. I didn't actually see that one being cast. I was like, why isn't this Ogre slow? But it looks like he threw the dagger to kill off the Razor. Now the chase is on. Hookshot is available. Four star forward with the battery. So Cogs in the kind of push rather than the trap. The chain stun is maybe going to come out now with the hookshot as well. The impales there, but the first damage onto the clockwork. The swap isn't going to be enough. And Kuo, 15 HP. This game an absolute bloodbath here as we're going to see Gotcha taking heavy damage as well. One more impale will end his life as uh, well, it's maybe just going to be the, the uh, arcane bolts thro being thrown out. The impale comes in. Forev gets the kill. His full stuff now complete. Razor will uh, complete his mech back at base and... MVP Phoenix find a great couple of successive kills here and that's huge. Because Spectre suddenly is level 10, has face drums, even though he didn't actually get the last hit on some of those kills, he stayed alive. And Mythras overextending in a pretty bad way there. Centaur still working on his blink dagger. This is a really late blink at this rate, but not going to be the end of the world for him. Even on the jungle, Akels has picked up his ulti orb and just doing whatever he can to find just a little bit of farm here or there. 15 minutes in, and I think that's MVP starting to pull ahead by... Uh, okay, pull ahead by the smallest of small margins. 
absolutely uh, nothing really as far as their lead's concerned. Maybe see Scarath. Not going to scout at this camp. We'll run into the Deuce in just a second. Doesn't have much as far as mana goes. No ultimate. Could pop the Arcane Boots and uh, have at least a couple Arcane Bolts. Need more top lane. Razor will bring down the tower. So mech completed. Probably wants to pick up the Ogre Club. More stats and survivability, but more importantly, build towards that BKB. Magic damage coming out of four of these heroes in heavy amounts. This is a must-buy BKB game, and I think you've got to go for it over the Ag Scepter first. Uh, maybe, may I mean, the Ag does give you some good stats survivability. Oh, Heen's going to get caught on the high ground. They didn't see him right away. They thought, thought maybe someone was invis and dropped the Sentry Ward, but they get a fast kill on the center, and this Centaur still no blink. Now swing towards mid. Raisin looks to maybe be the target. The hook shot's perfect. Four stuff's out of there as well. Maybe a bit worried about the Mystic Flare coming in. Now a haunt as he, he needs a Cogs or something to kind of help his retreat here. Luckily for him, the Impale not going to land. He pops a battery assault five seconds before a Cogs is online, and Forev will uh, bring down the Clockwork there. So this is a high value kill considering how well this Clockwork's been doing, but it's mid lane now, the T1 tower. Somewhat under siege as Lakels is kind of leading the charge here. Really tanky with this Treads ulti orb. Max Mana Shield, not to mention he's got Stone Gaze now available as well. Or well, he had it already, but he didn't use it in that previous fight. They're getting slowed by this Lich Frost armor, but they're going to zone them out, guarantee the tower last hit, which does go to Medusa. Now Chain Frost coming into play. Gotcha gets stunned up. The mech is not going to be enough to save his life, I don't think, but the Stone Gaze on top of that will be. They can't keep going on the Ventral Spirit. The bouncers end, and Lakel's now out of mana. This is actually a bit of a tricky spot for him to be in. The one value point in the Bloodlust, Lakel's going to take very minimal damage from that Mystic Flare, as now they change target. They find Mipro and sit on the Razor. And uh, he's in a lot of trouble. The phase boost movement speed not really cutting it for him as uh, Lich gets the kill there. And MVP get a ki kill on the Razor. They killed the Clockwork earlier as well. They do lose these tier 1 towers, but these tower towers not really as important as they once were. The gold you get from them, definitely not as big a thing here as we will see. Oh, Forev gets out of the Cogs. I think he actually missed, missed the Cogs trap. Actually, no, Forev, he 4 stuff out of that one, and he, he tried to chase him with his own 4 stuff. One more Rocket Flare, maybe enough damage there. Ogre Magi, whoo! Wins the lotto with that multicast. Brings down the Skywrath Mage. Rocket Flare could just be Carapace. Actually, no mana. We'll get hit by it, but it's not enough damage anyway, so... Could see him full stuff back to base. Maybe just save a Carapace for a Rocket Flare. But he'll make it back to Phantom before a second Rocket Flare even comes out, so... Nothing to worry about here, but Clockwork... Still doing well, even though he did get a few deaths here or there. The problem is, he's getting a kill and then dying, so he's not really increasing his farm all that much. And then he's getting kills on maybe a support. Even if it's like a, a center or something, then Spectre gets these counter kills. QO, suddenly level 11, phase drums, and uh, 18 minutes in, dead even on kills. It is going to be Mythtrust pulling uh, ahead now. Back and forth roller coaster games so far. As uh, and Mythtrust, despite having this Medusa, the great late game carry that she is, are happy to group up and go for these towers. And Medusa can actually offer something in these fights. We've seen the Stone Stonegate do a lot. As far as preventing MVP from actually being able to properly engage, not to mention preventing uh, preventing kills on teammates. My pro mechs up, he's going to be alive for now. And then he gets used as well. Cure maybe wants to bring down the Razor. He misclicked the dagger. It goes flying off into the trees. Now he's going to get stunned up. They've already killed the Lich, and Cure's going to be the second. Oh dear. I misclicked the dagger on the Razor. Maybe he wanted to click the ground so he didn't get procked by the unstable concurrent, but he was completely off the mark with that dagger. Could have maybe used to try escape over the trees, but he was just completely lost in that fight. Bit of unfortunate. Misclicks happen to the best of us, and we'll see now bottom lane. It's going to be a swap stun onto Reason. He's going to be easy pickings as Impale catches out too. So it's a one-for-one -one trade there. Eventual Spirit trading her life for the Skyrath Mage. That is, uh, well, two lovers who are maybe not too happy with e each other today. They've got some counseling to go through before they can, uh, couples counseling to go through before they can uh, see eye to eye once more, but... Vengeance Skyrath hit the deck as Lakels will TP himself back towards the mid lane. He's almost got enough money for a Lincoln Sphere if that's what he wants, but normally you see that Perseverance fast, so we could just be in for like a Manta Rush, a Scardi Rush. These bulk stats, I said it a bit earlier, not the best against the Nyx and Mana Burn since it is based on your intel. But you can get it nice. I mean, ultimately, you've got to do something to tank up, and you, BKB, you kind of need to go BKB at later stages, but BKB on Medusa. It's just like an item you don't want to be getting. You kind of want to be having spells thrown at you because you're so tanky with the mana shield, but the problem is as soon as there's something there that can burn your mana, then you're in trouble. And if you go if you go BKB, your damage is so lacking, and it will be a Lincoln's. I think, I kind of agree this is probably your best bet. You go Lincoln's, and then you try to, like, minimize the amount of stats item you get. I don't think you want to go, like, Lincoln's, Manta, Scardi, kind of, and just rack up the stats too much. We'll see an Observer behind this tower. 
Razor may be about to walk into them. Oh, gosh. Fortunately, does not do so. Very close. Rocket Flare will fly over. Doesn't scout them as they are still smoked. Another TP coming in. It seems they're very aware. I wonder if they scatter this out with some kind of a ward or something. Because they're playing as if they know about this. They will walk into this Observer Ward vision. Yep, Ogre and Razor both. No Radiant Wards in the jungle just yet. And... That's an unsuccessful smoke gank, and Lakel's meanwhile just farming it up, has his Lincoln Sphere completed. They know where these heroes are, it looks like, and they want to go on this Razor, who is working on that BKB. They de-ward, so now Mithras also know they're in a potential danger. They know as soon as they de-ward that, that, okay, if MVP are near, they're looking to maybe jump us. And MVP, very close to this creep wave. I actually don't think they've been spotted just yet. Here comes the Stampede in, and my pro going to get stunned up. Yep, that's an easy kill to start things off here. They want the Ogre as well, who's going to bloodless himself. May just want to turn and start throwing some stuns, and... Uh, Hope for the best, but he's going to just try and hightail it out of there. There comes more. There comes one stun. I say stuns as if he was maybe going to get a multicast on it, but he wasn't. So MVP somehow managed to like thread the needle of creep waves, not get scattered. They were like running along here, and a creep wave was like chasing behind them, just out of vision. And somehow they didn't get scattered out. There will be a clockwork pickup as well. So MVP find three unanswered kills, and two of them somewhat. Uh, like, it was so they were. I want to say unavoidable. Obviously, they can avoid it if they. Just didn't move out, and they weren't farming the creep wave up here, but... Un unavoidable in the sense that um, somehow MVP just managed to, like, find the perfect line to engage in. But that third kill on the clockwork definitely should not have been happening, I feel. He knew exactly where MVP were. As with that, well, we take a dip back down. Back towards, uh, at least an even state of state for this game. Although Mithras still with a bit of an edge. Medusa the top farmer, and look at the top farmer for MVP. It's the Nyx of all heroes. He's got playing full stuff, which is nice and all, but... It's... It's farm you on your Spectre, surely, yeah. It's, he's not taking the farm from the Spectre in the day. He's getting a lot of this farm from the kills he's been finding. He's 6, 2, and 7. Uh, he was 1v1 in his lane against the Medusa early on, so actually got some okay farm there. So it's not like he's stealing farm from his team, but it's more just like, if you're MVP, you're kind of wishing this wasn't the distribution of your farm right now. Well... What do MVP have in mind now? They've got such great initiation with double blinks or Nyx as well center, and the four staffs can be used to uh, help their retreats. Or at least the singular four staff. Second one coming up soon on Reason, I imagine, on the Skyrath. Sometimes you do see the Yules, but I think the four staff may be going to be uh, the preferred option against the Clockwork initiation, even getting out away, of st away from stuff like the Static Link of the Razor. They send the Kells on the front lines, and it looks like they maybe just want to go for a bit of a push here. They go forward here. Actually, oh, oh, oh. The Carapace procked on the Howl, the Wave of Terror, and luckily, because he he got four staffed in, and he was going for that swap or stun of the Nyx, and that would have been a dead Nyx if he didn't Carapace that t Wave of Terror. He would have got swapped in or stunned, and then the burst damage is plenty here as they Lakels. Vampede, Lakels needs to get off his ultimate. Not gonna oh, see, they're just trying to bait it out, it looks like. Chain Frost goes through, bounces back to the Creep Wave, and that's the end of that damage. Here comes the, uh, oh, oh Hookshot actually catches that Heaney, gets off the hoofstop, but that's all he's going to get stuff out of the cogs. Mikel's just on the front line being a complete wall, preventing anyone from MVP walking past him, and that's an easy Centaur kill, as elsewhere it will be Spectre. Did Spectre actually use Haunt? No, no Haunt being used just yet, and they'll TP the Clockwork up here just to make sure this tower doesn't go for free for Qo. No Hookshot available, and bottom lane. With the TP out from Clockwork, Mithras have to be careful. They're staying here as four, and Spectre can TP in with the Haunt. No buyback from the Centaur, so it is a straight up 4-on-4, four four, as from behind is 4-F. No gem, no detection, it looks like. My pro pushing really far ahead. He has not got BKB, he's kind of playing like he does here. He's got the mech, getting close to his BKB, but you can be very careful. That's good from Mithr Mithras, though, getting a tier 2 tower and defending top. Because of the Centaur being dead, they could go for that push on the tier 2 bottom with a 4v4 scenario. And MVP just did not want to engage in the mech, the chain stuns, the burst damage from Mithras. Clockwork didn't even have hookshot, that's the thing. Like, he was the hero who was missing one of his kind of important teamfights goals, so they make sure he's the one who TP's top. Gotcha now going to get caught out, though, and he's... Yeah, he's got no way out from that. Stampede used a bit unnecessarily. I think maybe unsure as to whether or not they were actually going to get that kill. And for now, I think Mithras want to just kind of get this BKB on Razor and get Lakelza's next item, then they are going to be really strong for a small period of time. They do have to worry about the Radiance, though. But I feel like until Spectre gets an item on top of this Radiance, it's maybe not going to be too problematic in team fights. Mm, nice Carapace onto the Mystic Snake. Does still st still steal mana, but Nyx has got plenty of that to go around, although he is getting fairly low regardless. 
Razor goes mid and just about 500 away from a BKB is Razor. And the Kells farm we trust. That's uh, been the Mithras model for, for some time here. As uh, they may have changed their roster quite drastically uh, since past TI qualifiers and stuff. Mithras, who kind of had a very stable roster for a long, long time after the TI4 qualifiers, three of their kind of core players for the longest of long times uh, did decide to retire. TNK, Arba, and uh, some of their other support players as well. So, it's a very new. Mithras Rosser with some young players and doing really well. I think this is kind of what the team needed. They definitely got a bit stagnant. Uh, not to say... I mean, Lakels were still playing well, but I, it just felt like the team as a whole were not really progressing. So they bring in some young, young blood. SD, the former ideal Gigabyte. Uh, mid player, he was kind of like their star player and their, their mid, but he switched over to the support role, done really nicely. And some of these other players were just kind of these top pop, pub stars. Like, MyPro was like one of the top of the leaderboards players. Um, not too sure about Hehe. He's been playing as a tagged as a stand-in, but playing with Mistrust for some time, so possibly an actual addition to the team. And his clockwork has been really good. That's why they've been picking him clockwork over these other more popular offlaners, like the Tidehunter. They're like, no, we, we believe in this guy's clock play. Even had him in the mid lane this time, and... As things stand right now, Medusa is a good 2.5k ahead of the Spectre. Which is definitely a concern for MVP, and often you think about like a Naga when you get this Radiance, if you're 2-3k to 3K gold behind the enemy carry, it's alright. Similar story with an Antage Battle for you, because it accelerates your farm so much. The Spectre Radiance does accelerate your farm, but not on the level it does for an Anti-Mage or a Naga Siren with Radiance. Because Naga Siren has illusions, you split the map, you Riptide, you farm so fast. Spectre, you can Radiance down Creep Waves a bit faster, but it's not like a game-changing amount of... Uh, of farm, as we'll see uh, a nice little courier snipe there. No items actually on the courier, just delivered the BKB, so Mithrust will be annoyed by that. <laughs> I love this. This Nyx is just dancing around. He gets swapped, won't get a stun off. Oh my god, Four of me trying to be a bit too fancy here. He was trying to dance and juke and jive, but BKB for my pro will mean he's not going to take too much damage from the Mystic Flare. They haven't found any kills just yet. Gotcha going to be the first hero uh, to go down, but Nyx Assassin as well. Getting way too cocky there, and Cure with so much damage stolen. One or two more right clicks could be the death of him. Centaur is there to help bail him out. With a stun, buyback from the Nyx Assassin. He wants to maybe re-engage into this one as MVP of 5 alive, but a bit low on spells and cooldown as there's no haunt, there's no center ultimate, and Mythrust will say, well, you bought back, let's just back off a little bit ourselves. All we lost was a Vengeful Spirit. You can see on the teamfight recap, it is a net worth gain for Mythrust as a result of that buyback. That Nyx was just like, he sniped the Courier and just was happy to show himself. Like, he could see the entire MVP team here, and he was like, okay, I'm going to stand here. I've got Blink, I've got full stuff, I can bait you in. But Vengeful Spirit cancelled the Blink with the Howl, I believe, and then got him with a swap stun. He did stay alive a little bit longer thanks to the Centaur with a Blink stun and a Stampede, but it forced a fight, and I think that's a fight. M MVP do not want to take a team fight out in this area. They have a Spectre Radiance, but they don't have the overall farm across the board. Like, Spectre will die in these fights if she's not careful. She doesn't have the survivability. That's where we're seeing the harder... Well, maybe harder trash. Casual Vit Booster picked up for now. Sometimes you just see the Vit Booster into, like, Manta Style and you get the heart later on. But I think just wanting raw HP is not a bad idea against this kind of a draft. And now mid trust down the mid lane we go. Yasha picked up for Lakels, so... No added intel from this, but if it does get turned into a Manta Style, that's going to be more Mana Burn damage coming his way. Not as bad as the Skadi, though. I don't know if this is going to be a Skyda game. I think you may be Manta style, and then you start thinking some actual big right-click damage. And so we will see the Tier 2 tower being brought down with no defense in sight from MVP. The Korean squad there, I mentioned earlier, they're sitting in 5th place in the standings, and a win here would bump them up to 3rd place, and top 4 going into the playoffs. Still quite a lot of play left in SEA, but... These are the kind of matches. These are, these are the teams you want to be beating, and you want to be nudging out of that playoff contestion. And they swing from one T2 tower to another Myth Trust. They get the mid one, they go on top, and have to see if MVP plan a defense of this. They've got Stampede back online, all ultimates now available. Skyrath actually, I mentioned full staff or Yules, he goes for neither, goes for Rod of Atos. Which this game is good, normally I wouldn't like this on a support Skyrath, I think it's good when you can rush it as like a core Skyrath, but this game it's okay to break the Lincolns. It's got such a short cooldown and long cast range that it's a really good Lincolns break, and then it helps set up the mana burn from 4F, so... I'm okay with it this game. We will see a little bit of a wraparound. MVP smoked up, actually, March. In position, I wonder if they try and go on this deuce to start things off. Team gonna go for the stampede. Completely whiffs it! He goes right by him! 
He misses him with the blink and the stampede. They will get a kill on the clockwork to start things off. And clockwork's a big kill nonetheless. My pro now going to BKP stealing damage, but the full stuff from 4 will prevent that. The chase is on. No kills going Mithras way. Lich will find the Ventral Spirit down to the south here. As QO going to be just fine. Impale will help cover his retreat. SD does not get in range for any sort of follow-up stuns. And he's just level 10, so no second point in multicast just yet. An okay hold for MVP. Yeah, a good fight. They gain 1,800 net worth. They do lose the tower. But two big kills there as uh, make it three. As SD going to get caught out as well on the retreat. That's a dire ward. Helping give vision. They knew the rest of Mythrust had backed off, and it was safe to maybe go for that pickoff. That was with a really questionable center engage, too. He didn't have vision, to be fair to him. So he was like here. He knew he knew Mythrust were like right above him, kind of in fog. He thought they were running this way. So he stampede and blinked over, and they were already retreating. So he completely missed the blink stun. Didn't even hit them with the stampede slow on himself. His teammates, though, they caught Clockwork. Clockwork was sitting here, somehow got scattered and burst down to start off the fight. And that's a really important kill to be getting. This Clockwork, with Ag Scepter, 1900 HP, did absolutely nothing in that fight. And that's where Mithras just lost the fight right off the bat. They didn't have the lockdown they need. Like, this Medusa is farm, but... Like, no one was really kept in place. MVP just was kept away from the Medusa the entire fight. Medusa did... Like, if you looked at the combat log on that fight, I'd say Medusa did, like, maybe 1,000 total damage to heroes or something. Something really negligible. And it was split between multiple heroes, of course. No one even came close to dying on the, the MVP side, it seemed. Like, we'll go into the enemy jungle here. Mm, clockwork, once again. Starting to start things off. <laughs> 1,900 HP does not look like 1,900 HP when you're getting Ancient Seal. That burst damage is insane. Marge will get caught out, but another kill onto this clock. As uh, Skyrath is going to be very careful here. Has a TP out, but maybe thinking they can re-engage here. No, he's going to TP. He was really low on mana. My pro thinking about going for at least somewhat of a chase, but... Not something that's going to work out too well for them all. Forev, kind of in an odd position here. He has got the high ground advantage, so he sees these Mithras heroes if they come too close. SD will warp. What? What is Forev thinking? He's got the Spectre maybe to come back him up. He will force stuff out of this, but... The Ignite Slow, the Swap, Forev? I... Th it seemed he thought he was going to get a two-hero Impale. He completely missed the, the Ogre with the Impale, though. Forev, please! In the, uh, the great words of Twitch chat. DDX, question mark? DDY? No, DDZ. That's what that one was. That was just... All over the place. Tick the checkbox for DDZ on that one, as uh, we will see Roshan getting focused down here. Heen is nearby. We'll blink in, goes... Oh! -ho! Gotcha gets him before he can get off a hoof stomp, even during the cast time. He knew he was coming in. This Radiant Observer, what he could pre-cast if he wanted to. Now the Mystic Flare going to be doing some damage on the Mipro, but... Roshan's still getting low, and it looks like they don't want to make another go, with Sentra and Nyx both dead. He just goes over to the Razor, and that's a level 16 Razor now. This Observer would... It was what allowed him. I mean, it looked like some crazy reactions from Ventral Spirit, but that was like a pre, pre-cast stun. You can click him with the stun outside of the pit, and then as soon as he blinks, like you, you stun him immediately. So, e either way, good play. It's Myth Trust Gotcha really on point there. He was ready for that centaur. He was the one instructor. Like, look, this centaur may try to blink in. Make sure the stun is going to be pre-cast on him right away, and he got the job done there. Aegis over on the radiant side. They don't give it to the Medusa. And I think with good reason. This Medusa is more than farmed and tanky enough. Is this just going to be Yasha Skadi? I said this may not be a Skadi game because of the mana burn, but... Well, Kells may have his own ideas here. He's got a lot of money stocked up. And if he wanted the Manta, he would have bought it a long time ago. Sure, Yasha ulti all that makes Manta style, but often we just see casual Yasha on a lot of different heroes. And Yasha Skadi may be what he's thinking here. As uh, yeah, he picks up another ulti all will be a Skadi. So, MVP, what's the plan going to be from here on out? They're starting to realize they may need some BKBs of their own, at least for this Centaur. Gotcha now. Going to get caught up by a hook stomp. He does not get any sort of four staff off here. Lakel throws the Stone Gaze, but he's not finding kills out of this one either. So, just the one pick up on Eventual Spirit support that, for starters. As QO, almost at the heart of Tarask on himself here. Have they got a gem or any sort of vision for this one? They maybe want to take this fight here. Uh oh, SD on the high ground gets caught out. The Impale Mana Burn. There goes Yoruga Magi, and the Kelsus could be careful he has not got the Aegis. And he seems to be the main target of choice here for MVP. Now that the Razor does have a BKB, does have an Aegis. Cogs can block the chase here. Nicely played 
by he he is my pro just gonna get to work for a four stuffed out of there he's gonna survive this hookshot was almost catching him out as well they may be able to burn down the ages here it looks like that's exactly the case he he on the high ground has a cogs in a couple of seconds someone on the run here hasn't accepted so this hookshot is back online soon but he can't actually get in on time razor will go down and mvp phoenix win a big team fight 3k gold swing holy moly that should not have happened. Not with an Aegis on the Radiant side. They just couldn't execute. They're kind of failing to, like, burst anyone down. Their burst damage is kind of lacking, for one thing, but... They're getting jumped and just kited around by these four staffs. These dire four staffs are really coming into play. Centaur, Nyx, and uh, maybe a third one coming up soon on the Skywrath Mage. There is a third one on the Lich, so it's a fourth one, actually. Everyone just getting pushed around and kept away from the Medusa, kept away from the stuns of the Ogre, the Venge. Clockwork hookshot cogs traps aren't working. And for it now, ult ultimate orb, so suggesting a possible Scythe of Ice. I don't think you really need a Lincoln's this game, although maybe against something like a swap, but I, I feel it's a bit overkill on the defensive measures. Having a hex could uh, go a long way with as this game heads towards the late game. 36 minutes in, and MVP Phoenix... Still in nipping distance, especially when your Spectre's just got a heart of Tarraskia. He's very farmed. Not as farmed as this Medusa, and that's going to be the, the big late game battle. Medusa versus Spectre. I think head to head, it's they're, they're very similar carries in some ways. They're both incredibly tanky and hard to bring down. They both offer AoE damage from one of their spells. In Medusa's case, it's the split shot. In Spectre, it's the dispersion. So all this... And it's this AoE damage that isn't like crazy burst damage. It's like you chip people down slowly, but you do so reliably because of how tanky you are. So very similar in that sense. Spectre's just got that global presence. That's where I give kind of Spectre a bit of a late game. What about an edge, but a, a bit more... A bit, I guess there's more ways you can play the Spectre late game. Like you can farm one lane, haunt back in. The buyback haunt's really powerful. Uh-oh. You're going to see a bit of an engagement here coming out. Nyx gets four stuff to the low ground, though, and that's where these four stuffs are just huge. Gotcha getting low. He's actually not going to be brought down here. Meanwhile, on the high ground, it is for him. Helping bring down the Clockwork here. He's just going to TP himself out. Kuo though. Uh-oh. The Skadi slow the right clicks of my pro on the Razor. He did use his BKB for that one, but he killed for Spectre. It's a pretty big kill. Does have the buyback. No haunt, though. Late game Spectre buyback is going to be very potent if you're not ready for them. Spectre will go for the buyback. Swap back. Forever will get stunned up. But gets the Carapace on the stun damage. Can he actually get out of this one? Four stuff. Not available on himself. The Chain Frost is just bouncing. This is the entire Mythos stream getting annihilated. Haven't got BKB available on my pro. March is going to go chasing, looking for this uh, Medusa, who does have Lincolns in a couple of seconds. Froke going to go for a four staff Blink and Pale, maybe. He just a little bit out of range. Four staffs the center into a hoof stop. Really nicely played by MVP Phoenix. They're going to catch out Lakels. No Stone Gaze available. And down goes Medusa. There she blows. The big fat carry of Myth Trust brought down and. MVP Phoenix with four heroes on the sidelines. That's just the uh, Medusa kill. Medusa kill alone was a 1,500 gold swing. 700 of that going the way of the Spectre. Who suddenly has another 1k gold even after the buyback. So used all the money she had on the buyback. And Kuo still looking good to pick up another item soon. Clockwork, got to be careful, man. We've seen that pick off happen way too many times this game. It, it feels like in most of the game, Mythtrust have been ahead on net worth. But it also feels like... Most of the important team fights, MVP are winning. Not just that one, as we will see March get put out here in the cogs. As we, uh, time and time again, these four staffs out, and he he's stunned up, so he couldn't actually four staff himself out of his own cogs as he takes a lot of damage from the Mystic player. They will defend the tier two. Mithras seem to be out farming MVP Phoenix, but MVP Phoenix are out fighting Mithras. The kills obviously kind of reveal that with a 32 to 23 kill lead. But Mithras still have good farm. You look at this Razor. He hasn't really team fought all too well. He's kind of had been like BKBing just for single targets, and then the actual team fight will erupt afterwards, and he won't have BKB. But he's going to be nice and fun. He's got the Ags. Refresher, a good good choice here, because he needs more BKB duration, and that's where Refresher, I think, allowing him to have double BKB more than the actual double ultimate, could be really important. Can he hit the Rocket Flare? Doesn't look like it. It's on cooldown, and Reason will get out of this one. So they're going for another push here. No Inspector's buyback is on cooldown, but this is still tough to do. Lakels is buyback himself, so even if disaster strikes and they somehow lose multiple heroes, it's not the end of the world here. Maybe thinking with this Razor Aghanim Scepter, they can uh, force some stuff out here. Night Suki have force. <laughs> this is just.
full of people forcing the issue, forcing stuff around and force, force, forces. Myth Trust, uh, ready to break high ground. Lincoln's is the item of choice for Nyx. Sick of being swapped and other other stuff being just annoying him here. See the Kells on the front lines here. Mystic Flare, he's losing a lot of mana fast. Nice swap out coming out from the Ventral Spirit and Force Staff as well. The Kells is still the target here. He's got maybe gonna go down. Gets off just enough mana for the Stone Gaze, and with Stone Gaze being cast, that could save his life. Four of don't walk into this one. Oh! Gets stunned up. Multicast is there. The Kells gonna realize he's probably dead. We'll stand and fight. We'll bring down the Nyx Assassin before he goes down. They've lost Ventral Spirit as well. Hehe <laughs> taking heavy damage on the clockwork. There's a hookshot in just a couple of seconds, but these hookshots aren't really leading into kills. And he does get brought down. Kuo shows up for that, and he's looking for more. He wants my pro, and he's gonna get... No, he won't get my pro. Gets out just in time with the TP. Instead, it's gonna be SD with the Ogre Magi being chased down. One more Spectral Dagger. The chase is on. Kuo wants this kill, wants this gem. SD has got no farm. This is far from that kind of four position Aghanim Scepter buying Ogre Magi that we sometimes see, but... Luckily, he will get out of there with the gem in hand. And Spectre will find also a double damager in here at the top lane. And they just cannot push high ground. This Medusa, I, it really feels like you need a BKB. And the problem is you've gone full defensive mode with these other items, like Lincoln's as well as Skadi. So I feel like if you go BKB instead of the Skadi, like you can go BKB plus damage. Like, yeah, whatever it may be. Like a BKB into Daedalus, a BKB Divine... I mean, Divine Rape is obviously maybe a bit too ballsy, but especially if you're Nagus... You're very hard to bring down, and it's just all the, the spells and the chain stuns, and the Ancient Seal especially. This Ancient Seal amplifying the magic damage that's being taken is just colossal. That Medusa looks so squishy in that fight. The other thing I feel that was really lacking this game, Hee Hee on the Clockwork, no Blade Mail. So often he's getting burst down in like two seconds flat, and that's where Blade Mail means you can do a lot of return damage. I, I agree with the full stuff as like a good item this game, but... I think he wanted to get a blade mail at some point, either before the four stuff, maybe after it, before the Ag Scepter. It's kind of too late to get it now, I feel, because it's, it's the Dire Side's tanky enough and just has enough HP and stats that it's not going to get any, any kills, but maybe something that he's going to look back in this game and say, if I'd gotten a blade mail as my first item or second item after the four stuff, things would have gone a lot better for me. An MVP, i got to say. Uh, looking once again to be in the better position, and finally, for the first time this game, the net worth graph agrees with me. They pull ahead by 3,000, and here they go into the enemy jungle. Centaur. Oh, this could be really bad. Can he BKB in time? Yes, he will. Won't get hit by the hostile, but they're going to go for the Ventral Spirit and set Ogre Magi maybe going to be a key target as uh, SD will be brought down by the Chain Frost, which is still bouncing. Lakel's got off the Stone Gaze. He's running a right-click down for it, but that's maybe all he can get. One full staff may need a second. He kind of... Ah, he gets pushed around like a ping-pong ball, but unfortunately does not go in a straight direction. Needed to get pushed in a straight line, but he got trapped in the trees, four stuff this way, four stuff that way, and it just did not work for him. As uh, we will see Kuo get out of this one, he's just going to TP play it safe. Centaur wants more though, four star forward, blink on over, clockwork. Immense rescue this gem, we'll just go in for a casual hook shot. And then Cog's out of there, Lakels is going to maybe actually be able to bring down Heen. Trying to get that hook stomp off, Lakels kites him perfectly. What a player. MVP lose 3 for 2, so not a good fight for MVP there. And a lot of it comes down to that Nyx was alive for most of the fight until the, that chain full stuff kind of didn't work for him. He got kind of trapped in these, this, little, this little pocket here and got brought down. And Nyx is such a key hero in these fights. The spam, the 5 second cooldown mana burn, or 4 second cooldown mana burn, I gotta know my, my Dota 2 spells and cooldowns, but uh, is, is incredible. And there we go, do some BKB. But, at the same time, not much damage output from this Medusa. Can stay alive for a long time. Not just the pure defensive items, but stuff like Swap to help out Medusa. The Clockwork with Hookshot stuns, Cogs for zoning. This is a very much... Not just 4 Protect 1, this is a 4 Protect 1 and 1 Protect the same one. So everyone is like, let's protect Medusa. Medusa's even thinking about protecting Medusa with the item pickups. As uh, Medusa drops the Aqualand, looks like it will be an Aegis for Lakels. I wonder if he thinks about going for the thing everyone knows and loves, the Medusa Rapier. You'd have to deposit the Yasha back at base and work on that Rapier. And the problem is, I don't think he's actually going to farm the Rapier while he has the Aegis. He's too short of it, so probably won't be seeing a Rapier Aegis. The Aegis will expire just a bit too fast. And down the mid lane. They've tried this before, didn't have too much luck, but maybe this time they've got what they need with the Aegis in hand. All ultis up for MVP. Have they got the Spectre buyback? 
No, I'm gonna say no. Let's check it out. Yeah, short 280 gold. Looked like he did, but no, he's got unreliable gold, so he'll lose some of this. And maybe thinking I'm gonna farm some neutrals. Because Spectre buyback could be the make or break for this fight. They're gonna go in to try and start things off here. Lakels is on the front lines. BKBs, and now we can just stand and fight. Could focus Raxes if he wants. There is a glyph available, but most of the BKB duration is just being used to deal with that initial onslaught of spells. The Haunt and Chain Frost were four. So sure, BKB's on cooldown and MVP didn't lose anyone, but they did use some high cooldown spells and see a swap out on the high ground as Mypro doesn't want to use his BKB. Holding onto it for the actual fight. Lakel's now sunned up. He's got Aegis though, so this is not the worst case scenario for Myth Trust. Me coming back in just a second. Mypro, BKB ready. QO being pushed out of the cogs now. Lakel's still on the front lines. Gets his minor shield back on. He's going to be okay. Maybe he just wants to focus his Raxes, but with the Lich Frost armor, not the easiest thing to do. Has no Lincolns available. He's getting mana burned, and these mana burns, they hurt. That's where the Skadi, the Lincolns, all these extra stats make Lakel so squishy. He will get impaled and brought down. Myth Trust are just going down one by one. Q is still alive. There's no follow-up damage. They're going to lose Hee on the clockwork as well. Now SD is going to be the next one to fall, it looks like. This Atos spam is just slowing everyone down. My pro will manage to... Oh, just barely TP himself out. That could have gone even worse for Myth Trust. Mana Burn is just king today. Lakels is there, he respawns after ages, has the mana shield on, has full HP, full mana. And then gets mana burn twice. Twice in five seconds. And he has no mana. He loses his, like, his entire mana pool in five seconds. Without even being properly focused. It's not even like the raw damage that brings him down. They get some good damage on these Raxes, but they, MVP could have glyphed if they wanted to. They knew what they were doing. They knew they had that hold, and guess what? They now don't have to deal with an Aegis. I don't know what Medusa does. You've got to, like, during the BKB, maybe, like, just be able to get the Raxes, but that's where the Glyph, if he BKB'd and focused the Raxes with the Razor, it doesn't work. Glyph gets used and they just wait out the BKBs and the Glyph allows the Raxes to stay alive. The Razor's going to be going for a harder Tarrasque, which I think is an okay option, but... As I said earlier, I would have liked to see maybe a Refresher just for the Refresh BKB on top of the Eye of the Storm. I don't think it's worth Refresher just for the Eye of the Storm, but BKB is so important that having a double BKB is really nice here in this game. MVP just starting to pull ahead here. As, uh, looks like they're maybe making their way. Actually, Q has gone further south. He's looking for SD on this Ogre, and that's a very squishy looking Ogre. The Fusal Blade is there. We'll get Hook QO. Four stuffs away, and these four stuffs, they've been the carry of this game. The four stuffs for MVP. Stone Gaze gets used, but everyone's facing away. Four of them, 14 will not be so lucky. Turns looking for an Impale. We'll knock it out of there. As, uh, Lakel's looking to chase, but, well, he's Lakel's. He's a Medusa. He's not a Blinker. He's not a. He hasn't got real good lockdown, and the problem is Mithras lockdown is just these like single target stuns for Ogre and Venge, and whenever they get in range to use these stuns, they die instantly. Oh, big long range hook shot. Four stuff is available though, and it's actually a turnaround. Centaur with a double edge would have got that kill, but it looks like he played chicken and decided not to go for it. But if he just double edged right away on top of the Ancient Seal, that would have been more than enough damage to get that kill on Clockwork. So Clockwork, I think his lucky stars. He's working on a BKB of his own. Mikkels has bought a Demon Edge. I think finally realizing, yeah, I just need some damage. Next maybe no buyback. Yeah, the fact he's not here. And they're not gonna... Are they gonna actually glyph this? Maybe you're gonna have to do so soon. They're not... Okay, there we go. They finally glyphed, but there's a BKB. Lakel's gonna help bring down the Sentinel. Maybe nope. Stampede swap back in. will be brought down. That's a melee rack. So, despite every team fight that we've seen the last 15 minutes going MVP's way, finally Mithras have just, through sheer brute force, brought down a Rax, and at the end of the day, you are... Playing with a Medusa, so your ultra late game is pretty formidable if you can protect Medusa from these mana burns. So, despite MVP winning all these team fights, it's far from over for Myth Trust. They get the first racks of the game. 49 minutes in. QO has an upgrade to Fusal now, looking to chase, and doesn't look like he's going to be able to stop this TP of Gotcha. Instead, it may be the Ogre. Defusal, long range. Yeah. No, not going to go for it. Runs into some creeps and decides against. And MVP do have some heroes which really don't scale all too well for the late game. Looking at the Lich especially. Like, Frost Armor's nice. It's still just 9 armor and all that, but you're not looking at, like, big teamfight presence. Something like a support Sand King, which can offer you multiple hero stuns, especially when people's BKBs get down at 5 seconds. Chain Frost is, a uh, okay-ish. Not the best. And even Skyrath, another hero I look at and think, mm, late game Skyrath. Ancient Seal, like, t for the magic damage uh, uh, increase, Amplify damage is probably your best bet, but even that, not always going to be reliably happen, and that's where he's thinking, okay, I want late game impact, I want a Scythe of Vice. He's picked up a Mystic Staff here. 
Even just his arcane bolt's going to start hitting hard. He's got himself about 150 plus intel. Multiply that by 1.6 and you're looking at about... That's like 300 damage per arcane bolt. The base damage is 120. And then you get an extra int times 1.6. Yeah, that's like, I want to say about 300 damage. If my math is uh, correct on that. You get like 225 from the 150 intel, and then you get another 120, yeah. So, after magic resistance, maybe a little under 300. But hey, you're amplifying, you're getting rid of that magic resistance from Ancient Seal. So if you Ancient Seal Arcane Bolts, that's uh, that's big. You can see it maybe here on some of these creeps here. He's going to be one-shotting these range creeps with Arcane Bolts. Dire Observer on the high ground here. It looks like uh, Mythtrust know about this one. They Plasma. Uh, they had a gem, I believe. Yeah, there we go. Oh, there. yep, got the Hal Vision, and we'll bring down MVP's limited vision. They've got <laughs> they've got this ward. This has got to feel like one of the more uh, unnecessary, useless wards right now. At one point, though, MVP were on the other side of the map, though, and that's when they planted, and at that point, it did not look like as silly of a ward. But right now, with MVP just huddled in their base, this ward does not feel like it offers anything at all. Next, Roshan, how far away are we? At least uh, another minute or two. You gotta wonder what Lakel's. He's got his demon edge. If you think Daedalus could be the one rapier, I don't want to. I don't think MKB. There's not really evasion on the playing field. As Clockwork feels unsafe and decent reason. I don't think Nix is gonna ever get a solo kill there. But uh, the gems on the ogre, so very possible divine rapier. Very, very high risk though is the main thing. I think hoping to get the next Aegis because then he can drop the Yasha. Have Aegis, Rapier, and then they go for the GG push. But MKB does not feel all too necessary. Unless Spectre picks up Evasion, which does not seem to... It doesn't seem to be any indication of. My pro, BKB, no TP available. Oh dear. I couldn't TP anyways against... Oh, Chain Frost was on cooldown, so it could have maybe gone for a BKB TP. But he's just caught in No Man's Land. Avengers may be looking for a swap from the low ground. As, uh, now we're going to see the Haunt being used. They want some follow-up kills. SD just TPs out. Similar story for some of these other heroes. And I, I like that. Everyone TPs, Stone Gaze even being used, I'm perfectly okay with that, because if they lost heroes there, it's going to be really bad, and they still may lose heroes. Lakels gets hit by an Impale, follow-up, his backup is on the way, but still kind of far away. Centaur needs a Force and a Blink, and they're not going to go diving too hard. I think the Stone Gaze just help his three teammates TP out was well worth it. They may lose a tier 2 mid-tower off of this, but I think worse things could happen. And Roshan up in one minute, luckily it's not like a respawn right now, otherwise Stone Gaze wouldn't be available, but Roshan will respawn exactly the same time Stone Gaze is available, and the fact that Kells is this- oh, he's gonna go MKB, I was about to say, the fact he has all this money makes me think he's maybe gonna go for that Aegis Rapier play, but as it is, I'm pretty sure there's- yeah, there's no evasion. That's a- that's a cheeky little item. Spectre wants the double horn, and if you're- you're gonna have buyback in these fights, which he does not, you can have you can haunt with your first life, buy back, have a refresher, have a second horn. Even if not, double haunt Spectre Ultimate is going to do a lot of damage. Here is like Venge, Ogre, these squishy supports who have 1800 HP, so they're not particularly squishy, but against double haunt, yeah, you will start looking pretty squishy here. Nice. Four star play coming out, and we'll push the Ventral Spirit back. There's your Mystic Player doing a lot of damage here. There's a second haunt if Kuo wants to use it. Actually, no, that was the second haunt. He just pops a refresher back at base, it looks like. His Kuo will get multicast up. They've lost Ventral Spirit. Meanwhile, on the back lines, it's the Centaur going down. This is the uh, Medusa. Lakel's now hexed up and gets Ancient Sealed, so this magic damage is going to start adding up, and I don't think Lakel's has a way out unless he can get Chain Force up there. Great hook shot! Cogs opens up the entire fight! These heroes are just trapped in the Cogs, but a second Mystic Flare in the same fight will bring down the Medusa, and now the chase is on. MVP March wants some kills off of this. Razor now on the front lines. He's just respawned. We'll start off the fight with one, looking for a second on four of and four of his uses Blink full. Uh, hasn't used his full stuff though. That'll help him escape. QO now in the sides will just go for a straight TP and stuns out of range. Just barely escapes. Not particularly good fight for Mythtrust. Losing their Medusa. Very even on the net worth change, but... I guess you kill... Yeah, you kill two... Like, Centaur and Lich. Still, overall, I guess, a pretty null fight. We will see Roshan get scattered out. MVP realize it's back up. Mythtrust probably have a pretty good idea themselves, based on... That we're getting close to that... Like, it respawned out a minute ago, and it was like a... That, that would be like... Right now, it's been two minutes past the possible earliest time, so... Latest Roche respawn is maybe like 30 seconds to a minute from now. If Razor can get to a refresher, that's going to help him out a lot. I mean, keep talking about this, but... The double ultimate, and more importantly, the double BKB. And I don't think you even need double... The problem is, 
he BKBs and MVP have all these full stuffs, they dis they disengage and then they come back in, and that's where you need that second BKB. You don't want to be using it right off the bat. No. We'll see what Mythtrust have in mind if they try and contest this. I don't know if they quite realize what Q Q can't solo Roche. This Roche just gets so strong here in the late game. That Dusa though keeps looking very squishy, and I don't blame her not going for a, ra a rape rapier with that. But definitely a bit a bit sad to see a Dusa game without rape rapiers. Neither team will want to fully commit to Roshan, I imagine, with the possible engage, uh, possible, I guess, yeah, well, long range engagements from a Clockwork Hookshot. You've got the Haunt from MVP, double Haunt from MVP, so they can even use Haunt just like kind of. Someone to scout if they really want to. Inspector's got 4.2k gold, so... Got to imagine some kind of uh, big item coming up for Spectre soon. I think Butterfly may be just your best bet. Manta's not bad as well. Especially Manta Diffusal. That's a lot of extra mana burn. I mean, you talk about the mana burn from the Nyx on the Medusa. Manta Diffusal? That's painful stuff, too. So I think Manta may be... A a really good item choice, especially against this Medusa. Oh, they see Ventral Spirit. They got the ward on the high ground here. Gotcha's gonna be the first target. We brought down in no time at all. Multicast stuns, not gonna actually work. Faroke gets the link of this one. Lakel's BKB right clicks. Nice four stuff over the cliff. Oh, Nyx, Nyx, Nyx will escape his way out of there. Meanwhile, on the back lines, it's QO. He's gone into a very awkward position. We'll throw the second horn, but this means if he buys back, he doesn't have horn. He's not even gonna get this kill on Hehe. The clockwork. What? He's horning around. He's actually get, gets himself out of there and he kills the Medusa. Really bad for Mythrust. They've lost three. Make it four in just a second. My pro. He's not getting out of there. They saved the clockwork and Spectre. TP ignite damage. Not enough. He'll make his way home. The double haunt. That haunt duration as well. He threw the second horn. It looked like he was just trapped in these trees, but the problem was Medusa. Medusa was up here fighting the rest of the MVP team and suddenly Spectre's like, oh, I can haunt to you. And then, the, then all four heroes of Mythtrust who were focusing the Spectre were suddenly twiddling their thumbs and doing absolutely nothing, so... MVP Phoenix win a huge team fight. 47 kills to 32. Now they will to move into the Roshan pit. This is not the easiest of Roshan still. 57 minutes in. Roshan hits like a truck. They need their carries here. I mean, you could see Clockwork even contest this Roshan because of how much damage some of these heroes will be taking. Earns Frost Armor. You need it all. It uh, looks like Raisin will do some dewarding on the high ground here. They've got the gem on the Centaur and... Vision denied. Rays are going to buy back. I think realizing how much they're struggling to kill Roshan. And Spectre's not a good Roshan killing hero. No life, uh, no, no life steal, and just not the best like straight up right click damage for Roshan because a lot of your damage in team fights come from dispersion and desolate, which you uh, aren't really doing too much of against Roshan. So the buyback from Razor will prevent the Roshan from MVP. So no Aegis, no cheese. I'd say worth the buyback. They get to hold on to the the Deusa buyback, and Deusa's got one slot left. I say one, it's holding a Yasha. I don't think Manta Style's gonna be the late game item that, that wins it for you. I feel maybe you go like Satanic if you wanna go super defensive so you can at least lifesteal. But you're getting chain stun. Like it's you die when your BKB your BKB wears off, you get chain stun. You're not gonna be like satanic right clicking to heal yourself up. So I don't I don't know what that last item can be. I think you just go damage and hope that you can do as much damage during your BKB as possible. And that's where I feel the MKB wasn't your best bet. I feel like if you're Deucey, you're thinking, I've got this small window when I'm in BKB form and maybe when like my clockwork's locking people in place, I can do damage. And you want to maximize your damage during that very small window when you're not getting chain stunned, mana burned, and just focused down. So you want to go as much damage as possible. That's where Dying Rapier would be ideal, except for the fact that you're likely going to die after that small window. So maybe he goes for a Daedalus? Butterfly is possible, but it feels like Daedalus or some kind of just raw damage is maybe the way to go. Mjolnir would have... I, I feel like he could have gone for a Mjolnir earlier. Because everyone's focusing you. You put the Mjolnir on yourself at the start of the fight, and you can do a lot of damage off of this. Not like a conventional Medusa item by any means, but maybe he goes for that instead of like the MKB this game. Either way. This has not been a very Medusa-friendly game, as uh, we can see on the net worth here. Spectre finally overtaking the Medusa for the first time this game. And MVP are just winning teamfight after teamfight. They've down Araxia, but they're sure as hell not playing like it. And it hasn't felt like it the entire game. 
Feels like MDP's just been winning most of these fights. Nice impale dodge coming out from Gotch. I'm not sure if it was even intended, but either way, that's going to stay alive. These supports, though, just can never stay alive. Myth Trust have some very poor supports, as we can see here. Gotcha to the second haunt will end up going down, gets purged up as well. Now Spectre goes to the next target. His haunt is just allowing him to move around this fight so easily. QO doing a great job with this. He's picked up an Eagle Song as well. They've killed off two, make it three with a Medusa buyback, and MyPro does not have a buyback of his own. He loses all his money. His buyback was on cooldown anyways, and QO gets a triple kill, and I think MVP may actually try and breach the high ground down the middle lane here. We've got heals coming in from the urns of March. A lot of that. A lot of heals at that. And he's got a Scythe of Ice. Not to mention Skyrath has a Scythe of Ice. Both MVP supports have Hex. Everyone on MVP has 12k net worth or more. Ogre Magi, 4k net worth at 60 minutes in. Ventral Spirit, 6.5k. Even the Clockwork was overtaken. At 20 minutes in, Clockwork had top net worth. He was dominating. Now at 60 minutes in, he's bottom three next to his own teammates. And that's where this game's been decided. These supports for MVP, while not being the best late game supports, have insane late game items. Like, I would say Ogre Magi is a much better late game support than a Lich. Is a better late game th the support than a Skyrath Mage, but not when these supports have four star Hex. Four star Hex is just, it's just insane right now. He he goes for a big Roshan play there. Tries to steal the Aegis, won't happen. And uh, Heem will pick that one up. Cheese on the ground as well. And Farm supports is just straight up winning this game. It's it's not been about the carries. The battle of the Medusa versus Spectre has been a pretty uneventful one as far as who's actually the better carry. And I don't think either... I, the Spectre, like, obviously the last few fights has been doing more, but that's just because of the space created by these MVP supports. The four staffs have just been game winning. Like I, I think more than the Hexes, it's been the four staffs. Full staff being, I think, just a bit of a reminder to teams. This used to be bought every single game. Back in, like, 6.80, 6.79, every support would rush, a, like, basically your only core item you wanted at, like, 40 minutes in was a full staff. This was before supports got, like, lots of golden games. It was always about the full staff. This could just win you a game with one well-placed force. It actually got nerfed in a patch, a few patches back. I can't remember exactly when, but I remember it was, like, too broken. Um, but a bit of a reminder that, yeah, getting, getting these four staffs can win you games. I think Secret at Starlighter used them better than any team, like, has, has in a long time, and teams have definitely been under, under buying four staffs. Like, going for, like, going for stuff like mechs and stuff, which is, ha has that small 10 to 15 minute window in the mid game where they're better, but get to late game, and these four staffs don't fall off. If anything, four staffs get stronger the longer their game goes. Because you can use them. When your opponents are trying to BKB focus you down, or when you get hexed, you f you can full staff your teammates who are hexed up. So, I'd say the longer games go, full staff gets better and better, and that's what we've been kind of seeing in this game here. Myth Trust can't kill a hero in a team fight, and it's all because of these forces. MVP now ready with Aegis in hand to maybe try and make a break at this Myth Trust base. Refreshes back up. I think that's what they're waiting for. The Spectre refresher hits online, as is the buyback, ready to go. So Kua has two lives, two haunts, and a butterfly. Newly purchased, and MVP go from T2 mid to T2 top. I'm not going to go straight for the high ground here. Aegis still has a bit of a window, so... Three minutes left, roughly, and... I don't see Myth Trust defending outside of their base. Ogre only now with a point booster. 63 minutes in, and MVP... Find themselves... Uh, probably feeling pretty invincible. They're probably thinking, like, how do we lose this game? At the same time, that's the kind of attitude which can quickly lead to you maybe leading this, losing this game. But for Kuo to have two lives and two haunts, and the Aegis on the Centaur, well, he's been really struggling this Centaur, but just having that second life make a big difference here. These swaps have to be used defensively to save Medusa. No more swapping gauges. Gotcha's only instructions, I feel, can be swap, save Lakels. If he's getting focused, if he gets Ancient Sealed on the front line and he's getting chain stunned, Swap him out, reset the fight, even if Gotch has to pay for it with his life. But MVP say, let's not get hasty here. We've still got two minutes on this Aegis. Hey, look, there's also a T2 tower bottom. So they're going to get complete map control, take out all these towers, and uh, then look to... We'll make sure that there's no Radiant Vision up, which right now is well, summed up by this just singular ward. This is, speaking of singular ward, this is a pretty cool-looking ward. I don't think I've seen this ward before. Love me some cosmetics. <laughs> As uh, Myth Trust actually going to try and defend out of the tower. Hookshot forward. They see three heroes mid. Immediate haunt. I guess he baits out a haunt. That's maybe a victory, but he he's could pay for this with his life. There's your center engagement. There's going to be a stone gaze coming out from Medusa. Lakels is going to get some decent damage off. Keen, maybe not the best target because of the Aegis. Cure. 
uses his second haunt, so even if he buys back, he could boot to travel in, but he has not got a haunt here. Kuo is the target. Great impale. Hoof stop. The chain stun is real. Gotcha and the Kells both stunned up for a good six, seven seconds there. And well, they forced a retreat though. MVP. He just popped on the Centaur, four of taking heavy damage. He's got the cheese, though. We'll get it just in time. Lakels now gets mana burned again. That's a 600 mana burn. That's a third of his mana every single time. The hookshot's going to come in. I don't think it's going to be enough to save Lakels. Does he have buyback? No, he doesn't. It's on cooldown for two more minutes. Hehe -he now in some trouble here. Kuo going to go for the dagger elsewhere. Says, I don't want this clockwork. Clockwork going to go for the hookshot on the ogre, but it was on cooldown for another second here. Couldn't get back to the high ground. It's going to be all over. Myth Trust have run out of lives. They've run out of juice. The car range is dead and my pro will go down. It's five on the sidelines. They've finally broken the Radiant base and Myth Trust have nothing left to do except call GG. Buybacks not available on anyone on the Radiant side and MVP Phoenix just somehow turned this game... I, I don't even want to say turn this game around. They, they were behind for a long time on net worth, but it always felt like they were winning team fights. They were getting slightly out farmed. Myth Trust were a bit more efficient with their farming because Clockwork did such a good job at creating space. But once MVP got to the late game, they drafted the heroes they needed. And that's where that's where it goes back to. Drafting the heroes, not drafting the lanes. Uh, I don't think Mythrust overdrafted the lanes. They definitely had a good late game, but they drafted Medusa, who just got so hard counted. 4 rev on the Nyx Assassin, 22.7 fantasy points. I think that's the highest I've ever seen for someone as far as fantasy points go. And he, I mean, he's, his, his score is good, but... His items, his farm is great, but yeah, it's not like a, he's six slotted, but either way, that's a lot of fantasy points to be picking up there. MVP, now pull ahead in the Summit 2 by G2A.com SEA Division. That's going to put them up to third place with a 5-2 and two record. Myth Trust dropped from fourth to fifth, so they're still in the ra race for the playoffs, but they've got to win some more games. Not the uh, most comfortable position to be in. This is one of those big matches, those matches you look back on if you do or don't make it. Uh, into the playoffs, and you can say, this match here, we needed to win this if you're Myth Trust, maybe. But hey, we could see both these teams in the playoffs. We'll see a lot more of them in the group stage, though, guys. Uh, that's it for today for SCA. There's more action coming up over the coming days for America, for SCA as well. America's today. SCA is going to be back tomorrow. But guys, I'm Gods from Beyond the Summit. You can follow me at BTS Gods. And also be sure to check out the uh, the contest we're doing for the Summit 2 uh, with G2A.com. We're going to be doing a contest. If you want to come to the Summit 2, you can win a chance. We've got a contest going on over at uh, g2a.com slash trip to the summit 2. Check it out if you want to come. If you want to hang out with us, BTS guys. Drink with us, eat with us. Have fun with the players. It's a lot of fun. So uh, definitely encourage you guys to enter the contest there. But guys, I'm done for SCA. We've got America kicking off in like five hours time maybe. But we're going to have a bit of a break. Check out some of the other Dota going on. Uh, but that's it for me. See you guys later.